we'll see. Let's see. Let's kick it off. So, um, Yusuf, maybe uh, let's jump into it. So, maybe we can talk die. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good one. So, we're quite satisfied uh, with the addition of die to to the PSM. Um, you know, I, I see it as a significant milestone towards the, the decentralization of uh, IST as an asset. Uh, but also it, it addresses the, the FUD I've seen on sometimes on social media where uh, IST was uh, sometimes described as a, as a proxy for uh, centralized issued stable coins like, uh, like uh, Tether and, uh, and Circle. Uh, so that, that, that's sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can just have to interrupt just to say, perhaps for some of the people on the call, they're not aware of uh, what role you serve and how you're engaged with Inner Protocol. Perhaps we start with that and then continue. Yeah, sure. So uh, um, I'm Yusuf Amrani. I'm uh, uh, an elected member of the uh, Economic Committee in charge of uh, of uh, IST. Uh, so we're our like main responsibility is uh, to manage the the different parameters, uh, mainly economics, in terms of uh, of uh, growing uh, IST, maintaining the the stability, whitelisting uh, new assets, playing with the minting limits, uh, with the safety and uh, uh, and responsible growth uh, in mind. Awesome, thank you. Please continue. Yeah, so I was saying. Uh, th- we are very happy with uh, with uh, the addition of Dai, and uh, uh, and we've been able to uh, to address uh, the, the 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 uninformed FUD uh, I've been seeing on on social media. And to be honest, I see decentralization as as a marathon, not not a sprint, uh, and it needs to be done in a in a gradual, responsible manner. And that's exactly what uh, what we've been doing. Uh, and we've also, with the addition of DAI, we've proceeded with a, uh, a global rebalancing of uh, the minting limits of all the assets in the uh, in the PSM. So uh, I, we think that the timing was right uh, for this, with the uh, with uh, the white listing of of DAI, and also the the ongoing concerns around uh, USDT uh, in the midst of the, this bear market. Uh, so there was a consensus from the, the EC around two things. Uh, we wanted to give enough room to die. Uh, so right now we have, I think, 32% of the total minting limit that is assigned to this, uh, to this asset. And we also wanted to reduce uh, our exposure to uh, USDT. So now I think we're at 8% of the total min- minting limit. Um, so for us, USDT, like, we didn't see like uh, uh, an important... Uh, like concern, but we we had to uh, to address the the concerns of the of uh, the community and the, you know most generally the the the, the public's uh, sentiment. So that's that's pretty much it uh, regarding the rebalancing of minting limits. Okay, awesome, awesome. I think that that answers a lot of the. Um questions i had about it and so i there actually there was a community question which was um you know if you go to analytics.inter.trade um you know you'll see the uh, uh you know the assets that can mint ist right now and someone had you know asked you know what does it actually mean to have 90 percent 97 percent of minted ist on the interchain i thought that was maybe a good question for you yusuf yeah so i i think it just means that the there are uh, enough use cases as of today for IST to stay within the ancient chain. So, you know, there are a few LP pools on, on Osmosis and on Crescent uh, that give uh, that needed utility to, to IST. And I've also seen uh, that IST was just added in, uh, in a few stable pools on, um, on Osmosis. Uh, they just launched on Frontier Osmosis uh, uh, the stable swap uh, feature. So, uh, so th- this number of ninety-seven percent is not surprising uh, to me. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Cool. Um, so, are there any other updates around uh, the, anything that the economic committee is doing that you want to touch on, or should we should we keep going? No, I, I would like to give um, a last update, uh, update on where we are right now. Is um, it's quite a busy moment for uh, for the economy committee as 
as we prepare for uh, two major milestones that are the, the launch of native USDC and also vaults. Uh, and, you know, they should be coming pretty much at the same time uh, within a month maybe of, uh, of difference. So uh, the launch of native USDC on Cosmos in early 2023 is, uh, I think, is a very good news for, for us as, you know, it's going to dilute the, considerably dilute the, the bridge risk. Um, so we're currently having talks within the EC uh, to discuss the, the, the future of uh, bridged assets within IST uh, collateral. And also we have vaults that are coming as well. Uh, and so for, uh, for vaults, we're working on two things uh, in, in um, collaboration with the uh, Agoric Opco and, and Rowland, which is first a process for onboarding new uh, vault collateral. And also, uh, what kind of vault, vault information uh, should figure on the, the analytics dashboard for uh, proper monitoring by, uh, by the economic committee? So uh, as of today, there is a preliminary list of those requirements uh, that was prepared by uh, Chris Burke and uh, Jason Potts, who are also uh, members of the, of the economic committee. And we will discuss that in a few, basically in 90 minutes, uh, as we have our... Uh, uh, EC meeting today. Okay, great. A lot of stuff going on. Awesome. Santi, awesome. Santi, can I jump in for just a sec? Of course. Yeah, on the community side of things, as it relates to the economic committee and to inter protocol more broadly, I just wanted to flag a couple of things for the people who are on this call. Uh, if you visit the Agoric Discourse, which is community.agoric.com, uh, there's a section inside of the Agoric Discourse right now for inter-protocol, and that's where we're having a number of the discussions about uh, you know, certain aspects of things within the ecosystem. And I wanted to flag two things there for the people on this call. One of them is a post called Economic Committee Budget Proposal. Uh, obviously, the Economic Committee needs to be compensated. They need to have a working budget, and a proposal has been put forth for that funding to come from DCF. DCF's happy to do that, but we want the community to, to say this is the right thing. Uh, there's a discussion going on right now about whether this needs to go forward and actually be a signaling proposal or whether we can just go ahead and go forward and do it since DCF is willing to do so, at least for the first year, to sort of bootstrap things, get this going. You know, we view the Economic Committee as a public good, in short, and that's what DCF does, is support public goods. Uh, I flag it for everybody on this call because if you agree, please jump in and say so. If you disagree and say, no, this needs to go to a signaling proposal and a community vote, please say something. Otherwise, we're probably just going to move on and follow a path of least resistance and get it done. The second thing I wanted to flag for you is there is a new post up about the upcoming vaults release and a discussion of liquidation methodologies and the modified Dutch auction approach that's being advocated for. Uh, that's a place where you may want to jump in, do a little bit of reading to understand how that works and add any insights or opinions that you have about that process. So that's it. Just a shout out that there's a couple of things that are in governance discussions right now that we'd love to see more engagement around and, and pushing everybody to please jump in and do that. And once again, community.agoric.com. That's it for me, Santi. Back to you, buddy. Yeah, that's great. I actually, on the topic of uh, vaults and liquidations, I, 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 I think we have Roland here who I actually wanted. To yeah, what, with. what a great segue, Rick. Uh, that, that was my first few bullets here. Uh, so, hey, everybody, um, Roland here, and uh, I guess just to, to follow on with what Rick said uh, earlier this morning, I posted a write up of the the current plan for liquidations for the vaults contracts uh, that would be launching with v1 of the vaults release um and and so as rick mentioned you know please dive in there it also links to a github issue where uh it's been written up sort of more extensively by uh one of the gork uh engineers on the contracts team um the the tldr of of the liquidations is uh a dutch auction mechanism uh that is sort of robust battle tested you know, via MakerDAO, and um, the the real goal of it was to make sure that vaults can release much sooner. Um, so those of you that were aware of the the sort of original uh, originally communicated plans for liquidation, it required an AMM, 
And while uh, having a local market on the Agora chain is still a critical goal, it doesn't actually need to happen prior to Vault's release. And we know how eager Vault, everyone in the community is for Vault's to launch. Um, so we really wanted to find a, a good, robust mechanism that would allow us to get to, get to market faster. Uh, and so with consultation with uh, our MIT advisors and with the econ committee, uh, which, you know, Yusuf is a big part of, um, we, we sort of settled on that, des on that um, uh, Dutch auction design, which uh, again has, has worked so well for Maker. So yeah, please, please hop in there, comment on that. Um, you know, work on that is, is ongoing. As, as many of you know, the liquidations part of the vaults contract system is upgradable. It's a separate contract, and so uh, we fully expect that to expand, evolve, and and get more interesting over time as it allows for cross-chain kind of things. Uh, and uh, we have some pretty cool ideas in our in our back pocket uh, that that we hope to get to work on after the V1 release. So, um, yeah, please dive in there and comment, uh, and we're excited for for that direction. Um, I also wanted to comment on a few other elements of the Vault's progress. So uh, we we've gone through a large design process uh, on the product and engineering side, and uh, that has sort of resulted in you know, a long, long series of, of user stories and make, making sure that we're organized for all the work that needs to get done. A lot of that code actually is already written. Uh, so from our side, there really are just a few, few modifications we need, uh, liquidation contract, and then getting the vaults uh, to work with our smart wallet, which um, that was an addition that happened uh, there, there's basically just some technical things we need to do to make sure that those things work together. And, and so that's really um, uh, our core goal right now. And actually, I think, uh, I think we expect a, an internal demo of, of vaults working with a smart wallet uh, by early next week. So uh, still moving forward quickly on that. Then uh, we also are building a new front end for vaults. So those of you that have used uh, the beta that we had launched, uh, the, the front end for vaults had not, you know, that, that beta was launched Two years ago, almost, uh, and we hadn't spent time, you know, making that front end fresher, uh, more fun, more sort of DeFi uh, um, appropriate, and, and so uh, we wanted to make sure that that is is really sending a good signal to the market. And so we actually just had a kickoff call with the design team today that had already done some work uh, around the front end, but will um, uh, uh, sort of update it for new designs and. We're working, you know, there, there will be sort of a front end code available that can get run by the community um, and, and made sure that it's, it's sort of available to, to others to work with. So uh, that's another big piece. And uh, as Yusuf mentioned, the econ committee is also really working hard on not only their, uh, their needs from a risk perspective. So how do we onboard new collaterals? What's the, the process for that? Or rather, how does Interprotocol onboard new collaterals? Um, but also their needs from a data reporting standpoint. So they have been an important stakeholder from the pro in the product process to make sure that uh, we know what data needs to get reported out of the system so that they can do their job effectively. Uh, and so they're actually providing their feedback uh, today on that. So that's been really great. Really appreciate uh, their, their, their been being so diligent on that. Um, and then uh, I, I guess one other thing I saw Yusuf actually had, had made a post on uh, should liquid staking collateral be part of a, a, an over collateralized stable token, which is a really interesting question. Uh, I saw that that poll happen. I actually don't know how the poll ended up, Yusuf, but um, there are some questions on on the technical side that, that Agoric Opco is interested in. So, for example, if the community did want to do that, then uh, the vault system would need to be able to really understand what the price of that liquid staking collateral is. And there's a few approaches to that uh, and trade-offs between them. And so that's something that we put some initial thought into uh, and we'll, we'll start, you know, we want to make sure that Vault's release is ready to go first, but uh, that we're not building it in a way that would preclude that kind of interesting collateral to be added. So something that we're sort of working on in the back burner. Uh, and then have a bunch of other sort of fun, interesting cross-chain discussions uh, going on. So uh, just to call out one, um, you know, we've been talking with the duality folks on uh, how to do sort of easy uh, 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 transfer, swap, and forward uh, with the work that Strangelove had done. Uh, they're, they're building an SDK that would, should make that easy from the Agoric chain. And I know that our liquidators or, or liquidators on the inter-protocol will, will really need that. So um, 
you know, just to call out one of a bunch of other things that are sort of ongoing. Um, and with that, I guess I will turn it back to Santi, but uh, a lot going on on the product and engineering side here. Nice, nice. I mean, I'll, I'll let people, you know, any of the other speakers jump in on any of those first before, because I, I do want to get into some other stuff. You know, um, what Roland was saying, or should I just keep going? All right, uh, I'll just keep going then. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we talked about, you know, IST on the interchain. And I, we have Vanessa here who does works and helps a lot on IST across the interchain. So maybe Vanessa, a quick update on what's going on in that world. Absolutely. Thanks, Santi. And thanks. It's nice to hear everyone on the calls again. I feel like we're back at Cosmoverse, but, you know, distributed. Uh, I'm Vanessa Pastrito. I've come to a couple of calls before. I'm director of partner programs at the Agoric Opco. And, uh, you know, since Cosmoverse and even from the initial Cosmoverse, we've had interest in IST coming from fellow Cosmo zones as well as other networks. And we've followed up on a lot of those discussions. Um, we have uh, Hannah listening. She's on our team and has been spearheading those discussions. Um, and so we've launched sorry, we've seen IST adopted Moses as well as Crescent. And so you can see incentives uh, that are available there that have been uh, launched by the uh, DCF and Economic Committee. Uh, we're also in discussions for other use cases for IST, including UMI for lending. Um, the injective Helix Dex, Dex is interesting, so we're just keeping an eye out for that. And uh, Shade Protocol, which will be participating in the Stablecoin Summit, um, which you'll hear more about later on in this call. And overall, I mean, we're really enjoying a lot of these discussions. There's a great community, um, a lot of alignment of IST across the board. We keep hearing great feedback as to how helpful it is uh, to a number of people in their community. So we'll just um, keep you guys updated for the next time. And if anyone is having questions or interest around uh, IST or new use cases, you could reach out to me on Twitter uh, DMs, Vanessa Dice, and uh, Hannah as well, who's here, or any of us here on this call, but the fastest is with us. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Vanessa. For sure. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, you had mentioned Shade. So I, I, I do... Uh... <laughs> Actually, before I jump into some of that stuff, I want to see if we have any questions. Um, so if you do have a question, just raise your hand or request to speak. I'll throw you up on stage. Um, I'll keep going in the meantime, but uh, if you do let me know. So yeah, um, Shade Protocol's Stablecoin Summit's happening on December 20th. Uh, we're working on something with our friends at Shade that the community is probably going to want to take a look at. Um, you know, a kind of piece of it is a first ever NFT designed specifically by, you know, protocol for that event. So there are a lot of things happening around <laughs> socials and that event that, you know, inner protocols, you know, working on with shade protocol. Um, so yes, that's all I will say for now. So I'd say just keep a look on, you know, keep an eye on socials. Um, we'll be dropping some hints uh, <laughs> and I'll be a little mysterious about it for now. Um, so yeah, any any other topics we want to run through? I know we have what we have like maybe ten minutes. Uh, you yeah, see you and I would like I would like to jump in on something that we discussed uh, in our econ committee last week. That was actually a suggestion of mine that I discussed offline with Chris Berg, uh, and we brought it uh, in the econ committee last week, which was uh, the possibility to enable active management of the the PSM. So what I mean by active is being proactive in the in the management of the collateral within the PSM, where we would be able to swap collateral assets and effectively change the ratios without having to wait for these ratios to play out uh, organically. So such a feature would likely be constrained, uh, at least in my mind, to Black Swan events prevention. Uh, and it obviously needs like clear processes as to what we can do and what we can't do with the with the active management of the PSM. Uh, but I think it's a discussion that needs to to happen. Uh, and we've agreed uh, within the econ committee to 
basically postpone that discussion to after the launch of vaults, as this is the key priority. But I think it would be uh, pretty nice to have uh, as a feature for uh, for IST. So what, what, what does that look like for the user? I don't know if I fully understood that. So basically, it's it, it, like let's say let's say we have uh, some uh, urgent concerns about one of the assets uh, in in the PSM, uh, let's say USDT. So instead of like mm-hmm. just uh, we could basically like within uh, you know the 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 framing of a, of a, of a voting uh, swap that that USDT for a different asset like USDC or Dai to prevent that black swan uh, black swan event and reduce our exposure to that specific asset that concerns us. Got so it. that's okay. it's really about risk management. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I don't know if anyone has thoughts on on, on this, uh, Zaki, Dean. Well, the main thought I have is, of course, we have a community forum where more and more of these discussions, and as we roll out more design docs. That, that that it'll be exciting to to you know to have those there we the extended community you know so at community.agork.com so so we have enough time to have some good discussion about that you know in an ongoing fashion you know the 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 to to come up with something that you know nicely has has appropriate separation of concerns and separation of duties and 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 uh checks and balances and all those kinds of things one of the one of the you know, cool elements of, of, of the whole econ committee is the, the extent to which it has, you know, con- fingers on one knob, but the build uh, 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 community has has controls of the other. And so you've got this nice checks and balances. Um, and so so I think it's an interesting idea. I think there's a bunch of, of, of good stuff in that space and clearly having having, um, you know, richer ability to manage the reserve without putting it at risk is something that we all want to figure out, you know, more new mechanisms and, you know, and, and I expect roll out more new smart contracts to, to support that. Yeah, definitely agree on that. So, so I hear a forum post is in order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jan- sounds definitely. like a good January topic. <laughs> <laughs> One thought I have about all of this is this this is sounds like a great kind of feature for spinning up potentially like a, 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 a like external developers to uh, you know Agoric Opco um, building this kind of thing um, like sounds like a potentially like a good uh, good starting point for that. And what is what is surprising is uh, that MakerDAO doesn't seem to have that feature. I can't recall who told me that, but they don't have it, uh, and I'm surprised because it gives us like a good head edge uh, in being proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, I mean MakerDAO does have like a sort of governance god mode that I think can do stuff like this, but that involves, it's not like a specific feature for this. Like they would have to, they don't have a specific feature to like, that's already written, which does give them a, 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 like they'd have to like write and test and implement all of this and then, and then like deploy it in a catastrophe, in a black swan event, which you don't have enough time for. Right. right? Yeah. So like, yeah, you're, you're, I think this, I think this is a like very creative idea. You said, I really like it. And uh, one of the things, let me add. So the governance, uh, architecture in you know JavaScript context, which the 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 econ committee's voting is through the you know governance Legos all plugged together to produce a a, a committee. One of the things that that that, that has that, that like the PSM has is there's a separate contract which is the governance charter that is here's all the things that can be done so so that you know before the committee is when the committee is assigned to manage that thing the set of actions it can take. Are are well defined, and so extending that set of actions and enabling so you know and having it already so that third parties could propose and implement new smart contracts to provide another action that 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 um, the econ committee uh, uh, could take in a shorter time frame than a full chain vote. 
um, it, you know, that, that, that's the kind of thing that the framework was designed to, to, to support. And so, um, so as that gets well-defined, you know, with rate limits or, or size limits or frequency or, you know, voting criteria, so it's not simple majority, but requires, you know, some other majority or whatever it is, you know, evolving that future governance is going to be interesting. Part of the nice thing about pluggable, growable things is, is, you know, is, is that we can do that. And the nice thing about JavaScript is we can find lots of people that be able to do that. So, so I'm, that's, that's definitely a thing to, to, to uh, uh, pay attention to or, or implement new additional mechanisms next year. Yeah, and actually, um, if if anyone on the call is looking to potentially work on that, uh, I, I think the transfer swap and forward is probably potentially a, a functionality that would allow that. Right, that the the basic idea there is um, it's it's work from Strangelove that lets you very easily in an IGC transaction send send collateral of some kind, make a swap on an external chain, uh, and then receive the result back. Uh, and so, you know, we've been talking with the duality folks on that, but I think a bunch of the uh, the various Cosmos DEXs will probably support that. And uh, that's something that, you know, we could allow the, you know, the econ committee to, to manage the reserve or manage uh, PSM assets uh, in the in the medium term. Great. OK, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of good combo there. Thank you, guys. Um Cool. So let me uh, just close this by saying the Cosmos Riders Community Contest is still running. The Entrance Plaza and the Social Grid competitions are active. So you sh anyone can join that. Um, just head to our Discord. Uh, our next community call will be a month from now. I have to see if we're moving that date. Depends. Um, I think not. I think it'll be on the third Thursday of uh, uh, January, like we normally do. So um we'll we'll make sure to get that announcement out closer to that time and uh yeah thanks everybody for joining we had a bunch of speakers this time yusuf dean zaki vanessa rick roland everybody uh much appreciated as always for joining thanks for inviting us and somebody needs to say it happy holidays and happy new year everybody <laughs> stay healthy please <laughs> yes. thank you everyone and uh happy holidays and uh until next time, I guess. Perfect. Cool. Thank you, folks. Bye, everybody. Ciao.